All right, let's talk about commutativity or the commutative property of matrix multiplication. In a previous video, we talked about the associative property of matrix multiplication. Now the associative property and the commutative property are similar in that they both deal with the order of things. But while the associative property deals with the order of operations, the commutative property deals with the order of the multiplicative terms themselves. You will notice that on the left, where we have the associative property, both on the left and on the right, the multiplicative terms come in the same order. A, B, C on the left-hand side, A, B, C on the right-hand side. What's different is the order of the operations. On the left, the first multiplication is done first, and then the result is multiplied by C in this order. First the result, then C. On the right, the second multiplication is done first, and then it's multiplied by A, and the order is preserved. It's A times the result of the product of B and C. Now when we come to commutativity, now there's only one operation, but the order of the multiplicative terms is reversed. So that's the crucial difference between commutativity and associativity. And while associativity holds for matrix multiplication, commutativity fails for matrix multiplication, as we're about to discover. So that's one crucial difference between matrix multiplication and multiplication of ordinary numbers, where the order, of course, doesn't matter, where 14 times 25 equals 25 times 14. And if you had to do a complicated product, such as 4 times 131 times 25, it would behoove you to multiply 4 by 25 first, and that, of course, requires switching of the order of the multiplicative terms, which you can, of course, do because the order doesn't matter, because the product of ordinary numbers is, is commutative. So going back to this example, the smart order of doing things here is to multiply 4 by 25 first, because that's 100, and then you get 131 times 100, which is 13,100. So you were able to do this because this multiplication is commutative, but the product of matrices is not commutative. And here on the board, we have an example from a previous video as well, where we had the same two matrices, but they're being multiplied in the opposite order. And when we multiply them in this order, we interpreted this matrix as an action. And the action was the switching of the first two columns of the matrix on the left. So this was the result. Now let's try to see whether commutativity holds or not by, ex by an experiment. Let's multiply these matrices in the opposite order and see if we get the same result. We won't. It'll fail and the failure will happen in a very interesting way. So let's go ahead and do this. So in this example, we're invited to calculate linear combinations of these columns where the coefficients come from these columns. So to get the first column of the answer. Now all of the linear combinations are complicated, have you know, large non-zero numbers. So let me copy them over here just for convenience, one set at a time, and determine the answer one column at a time. So for the first column we'll have one in the second entry, four in the first, and seven in the last. One of this column, four of this column, seven of this column. And of course it's four, one, seven. Four, one, seven, and we right away see that we're just not going to get the same matrix as we did before when we multiplied the same two matrices but in the opposite order. Let's complete this example anyway. The second set is two, five, eight, two, five, eight, and of course it'll be five, two, eight. Five, two, eight. And just completing the example, 3, 6, 9. So of course it will be 6, 3, 9. 6, 3, 9. And we observe two things. The crucial part is that of course this matrix does not equal this matrix. There are some similarities, but they're just different matrices. The values, uh, some values are the same, like for example this 9. And 
It's all, all the values consist of the same numbers, just reshuffled in a very different way. We'll determine what that way is. So the main takeaway is that commutativity does not hold. Matrix product is not commutative. There is nothing at all to be bummed about. Okay, and but what is the difference between these two matrices? We can actually pinpoint what it is, and that will show you that this fails not in a very random way, but there is structure to it. All right, so let's once again think of matrix multiplication as actions. The action of this matrix upon this matrix was to switch the first two columns. Now, when we have the matrices in, these, in this order, let's once again think of this matrix as acting upon this matrix. And if we think of it as this matrix acting upon this matrix, its action is to switch the first two rows. Do you see how this quote unquote equals the original matrix, but with the first two rows switched? So this matrix, when it appears on the right, switches the columns of the matrix on the left, the first two columns. But when it appears on the left, it switches the first two rows of the matrix on the right. And that right there shows you lack of commutativity because when it comes from the right, it does one thing. When it comes from the left, it does another thing. So there's really no hope for commutativity. So while associativity holds, commutativity doesn't hold. And your first emotion may be to be bummed out about this and realize that things are just going to be a lot more complicated and that you have to proceed with great caution because when you deal with multiplication of numbers, you switch them around without any concern because you know that that's a valid thing to do. Now that you're going to be dealing with matrices, you're no longer able to just switch matrices around because that is no longer a valid operation for lack of commutativity. But the positive thing about all of this is that lack of commutativity is actually more natural than commutativity itself. If you think about it, because we're now beginning to think of matrix multiplication as imposing actions, actions in life are not commutative. The order in which you do things very much matters in life. And actually, actions that you might ordinarily take in life are usually a good analogy and a wonderful metaphor for matrix multiplication or the other way around. I'll give you two examples. Uh, by way of a humorous example, there's a big difference between shooting first and asking questions later, or asking questions first and shooting later. So that's one example. But here's another example that's more commonly given to illustrate the lack of commutativity. Let's consider two actions, taking a step forward and then turning left. Let me take a step forward first and then turn left and then do the same two actions in the opposite order. So taking a step forward and turning left results in this configuration. Now let me do the same two actions in the opposite order. Turning left, taking a step forward. I'm probably not even in the shot anymore. So you see that two of the same actions but taken in the opposite order lead to different results. So there is no commutativity in life and there is no commutativity in matrix multiplication.